In this video, we're going to look at predict how you predict the pH of salt solutions. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to predict and explain the pH of salt solutions, including soap. So the first question to remind ourselves about is, what is a salt? So, a salt is a, one of the substances that is produced when you neutralise an acid. The salt is a substance which the hydrogen ion of the acid has been replaced by the metal ion of the base, or uh, perhaps by the ammonium ion of the base. Now, if the salt is soluble in water, they aren't all, but if it is soluble in water, it may affect the pH of the water solution. Sodium chloride, for example, is soluble in water, but that gives you a pH of 7. It's a neutral salt, but not all salts are, I don't know, demonstrate. I've got three test tubes here with soluble salts in them. This test tube contains ammonium chloride, this test tube sodium chloride, and this test tube sodium ethanoate. So I'm going to add a bit of water to each one. Followed by a couple of drops of indicator. Put a stopper in each test tube and give it a quick shake to dissolve the salt. And you see they all give very different colours. The sodium chloride gives a nice neutral pH of 7. The sodium ethanoate is slightly alkaline, so it's like a bluey turquoise colour. And the ammonium chloride is slightly acidic, giving you a yellowy colour. So all soluble salts certainly don't give you a pH of 7. Some do. Some don't. So how do we know if our soluble salt is going to produce an acidic solution, a neutral solution, or an alkaline solution? Well, there's a few simple rules that can allow you to accurately predict uh, whether or not the pH will be acidic, alkaline, or neutral. First one tells you that if the soluble salt has been produced by a strong acid, been neutralised by a strong base, then the resulting salt, if soluble, will produce a neutral solution when it dissolves in water. So an example would be sodium chloride, which was one of the ones we did in the video. Okay, so sodium chloride dissolves in water to give you a neutral solution. You'd make the sodium chloride by reacting a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, with a strong base, sodium hydroxide, producing your neutral salt plus water. Okay, so what about whether or not one of the acids or bases is a weak acid or a weak base? Well, if your salt has been formed by a strong acid reacting with a weak base, then if it's soluble, the salt will produce an acidic solution when it dissolves in water. A good example of this is ammonium chloride. And this is a sample we prepared in the video earlier on of ammonium chloride giving you a yellowy acidic solution. So to make ammonium chloride, you use strong acid, HCl, and a weak base, 
ammonium hydroxide, giving you ammonium chloride and water. So strong acid, weak base, the acid wins out, so your salt, if soluble, will produce an acidic solution. However, we want to explain why does that produce an acidic solution. To do that, we want to look at well, what ions, what things are present, what's going on in here. So let's look at what ions are present in our test tube. Okay. Well, the ammonium chloride is soluble, which means that the lattice breaks up and you just, just have ammonium ions and chloride ions uh, in the solution. But remember, some water molecules also dissociate a very small percentage, but there will be some H plus ions and OH minus ions present in the solution. Now, the ammonium chloride is soluble, so those two ions are not going to recombine. However, the H plus and the Cl minus ions should be attracted towards each other and produce HCl, hydrogen chloride. But we know that hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid, is a strong acid, which means it completely dissociates in water, which means it remains as H plus ions and Cl minus ions. They don't join together to form an HCl molecule. The ammonium ions and the hydroxide ions, however, can recombine to form ammonium hydroxide or ammonia plus water, because that is a weak base. So, some of the ammonium ions combine with hydroxide ions to form ammonia plus water. So, the ammonium ions can react with the OH minus ions to form ammonia plus water. shouldn't be that sort of arrow, it's a reversible reaction. So, but it will remove some of the hydroxide ions from the solution, leaving you with excess of H plus ions, and hence leaving you with an acidic solution. Okay, so, this reduces the hydroxide ion concentration and increases the hydrogen ion concentration, hence producing an acidic solution. Okay, what about reacting uh, a weak acid with a strong base? If we do that, we'll produce an alkaline solution. For example, sodium methanoate, which is what we made in the video, uh, is produced by reacting a weak acid, that'd be ethanoic acid. With a strong base, that'd be sodium hydroxide, producing our salt, sodium ethanoate, plus water. So, weak acid, strong base, we're going to have a salt that produces an alkaline solution. Once again, at advanced higher level, we have to explain why this solution is alkaline. So, if you look at what's inside this test tube, we've got our dissolved salt, so we've got sodium ions, and we've got ethanoate ions. We also have our H plus and OH minus ions from the small number of water molecules that dissociate. So, sodium and hydroxide are not going to combine to form sodium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide is a strong base and it fully dissociates in water. However, the H plus ions and the thanoate ions, some of them will combine because that's to form ethanoic acid molecules, ethanoic acid being the weak acid. So some of the thanoate ions combine with the H plus ions to form molecules of ethanoic acid. 
H plus plus CH3 COO minus So some of them will form molecules of ethanoic acid Hence reducing the amount of H plus ions reducing the concentration of H plus ions in the solution hence making the solution alkaline So this reduces the H plus ion concentration and produces an alkaline solution Now if both the acid and the base are weak you've got a weak acid and a weak base well, you can actually predict without having a wee bit more detail about how weak the acid is, how weak the base is, you can't predict what the pH will be. So at this stage, you wouldn't be asked to predict the pH of a salt formed from a weak acid and a weak base. So what I'd like you to do now is work your way through this table, which you're told if we react this acid with this base, what is the name of the salt that's produced? And will that salt be acidic, alkaline, or neutral? So pause the tape, work your way through this, and then we'll go through it and see uh, if you've got the correct answers. Right. If you neutralise hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide, the salt you produce is sodium chloride. That's formed from a strong acid and a strong base, so the salt would be neutral. Sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide, the salt is potassium sulfate. That's a strong acid, a strong base, so that would be neutral. Ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide. The salt will be sodium ethanoate. That weak acid and a strong base. So the resulting solution would be alkaline. Sulfuric acid and ammonia. The salt would be ammonium sulfate. Strong acid. Weak base, so the salt would be acidic. Carbonic acid and potassium hydroxide, the salt would be potassium carbonate. Carbonic acid is one of the weak acids you should know. Potassium hydroxide is a strong base, so that would be alkaline. Sulfurous acid and sodium hydroxide that would produce sodium sulfite, not sulfate, sulfite. Weak acid, strong base, alkaline. And finally, nitric acid and ammonia that would produce ammonium nitrate. Strong acid, weak base, so that would be acidic. So, you should be able to predict the name of the salt and uh, whether or not the resulting solution would be acidic, basic, or neutral. Finally, just want to mention soaps. If you remember, soaps are actually salts. So, they're usually salts of strong bases, sodium hydroxide to potassium hydroxide, and weak acids. Weak acid being carboxylic acids. So soaps would usually be alkaline in solution because they're formed from a strong base reacting with a carboxylic acid. So by now you should be able to predict and explain the pH of salt solutions, including that of soaps.